Hello. Okay, so that took me forever to even just get up, but I've got some stuff to say about my trip. So recently I went on a two week trip to Europe and I learned a lot of stuff and I just want to share those tips with you. So I just want to preface this with, I live in Texas and so I'm really used to traveling to different states or if I travel to Mexico or Canada, things like that. From going from here to London, which is the first stop we made, super easy, nothing really to say about that, but it was the smaller airlines. Um, so going from like London to Paris, Paris to Rome, Rome to Venice, that wasn't really an issue. I mean, there was an issue there, but it was a totally different type of time management issue on our part. Um, and then, so because of everything I experienced during this trip, I really wanted to make a tips video. I mean, I thought I knew what I needed to bring and what I needed to be aware of whenever we went on this trip before we left, but I was wrong. So the first thing is, I knew that I needed to get a travel adapter because obviously the connections are different in different like um, continents, different countries, whatever, it's gonna be different. So I was prepared, I bought my travel adapter, we get to London, we're super tired, and I had already done my hair before I got there so I wasn't gonna do it until maybe Paris because I don't wash my hair every single day. So the next day I am talking to my sister and she's like, oh, by the way, I burned myself last night. She also had an adapter. Turns out you need more than just an adapter whenever you're gonna use hairstyling tools. So what you need is a converter. So obviously that made me not wanna use my curling iron because I was like, if I burn it, I'm gonna have to buy a new one. There was like a small chance that yes, it would work, but I didn't wanna risk it. So I didn't, or I wasn't able to do my hair the rest of the trip <laughs> and I have curly frizzy hair so you if you would have seen my vlogs um, you would see that like the first vlog which was London part one my hair looked all right and then, then the rest it just was downhill from there so yeah just know that you'll probably need a converter if you want to do your hair if you are the kind of person that you don't need a styling tool all you need is to connect you know your computer your your cell phone whatever an adapter is just fine my second tip research what the political climate is is in the city you're staying in I didn't really have any major issues you know we went to London Paris Rome Venice there weren't really that many things that we needed to be aware of but just be safe but something that we needed to do research on which we thought we thought we, we thought we did enough research before going on our trip but it's to figure out what the public transportation is like so when we got to london it was super easy obviously we went to paris we thought it would be simple just because we thought it was going to be simple in all countries in europe but it turns out a lot of the stations didn't open until like 3 p.m and then they closed early too and we didn't stay in paris like in the city we stayed in the city called Bangalot, Bangalot, I'm sorry if I mispronounced it, and we were walking around trying to find, you know, a way to get there, and when we would get to a place, the metro, the gates were closed, and then we finally talked to someone and they told us they don't open until three. Obviously, there were some trams that were running. This is my third tip, which is to figure out what the pu public transportation is like beforehand and to see if you can get the tickets or passes before you get there. So, for example, in London, you would get an Oyster card for most, like, you know, getting around in the buses and getting around in the tube, but not all buses. You would have to get different tickets. And I say that because when we went to, we were staying in a, in a hotel, by the Heathrow Airport, and we weren't gonna go see the Harry Potter Studios. And yeah, there was like buses and that would take us there, but we thought our Oyster card would take us there. Turns out, no, we had to get a separate ticket, but by the time we said, okay, we'll get a second separate ticket, the bus wasn't gonna wait for us. There was gonna be another 30 minute wait, so we decided to just Uber. <sighs> Do your research. What we tried to do is save money. So we were a group of seven adults and one toddler. So we needed at least four rooms. So what we did was we all rent, we rented one Airbnb for the family at each location that we went to. And the one thing, I think the biggest regret was the one that we got in Paris because it technically wasn't in the city of Paris. But like if you are like where I live, if you're trying to get to Dallas and your Airbnb is in Irving, super easy, no issues, right? We didn't want to rent a car. We thought public transportation is gonna be super easy. And we thought, well, we'll just save money 
it seems like it's close enough, we'll be fine. Because we didn't do that research and public transit wasn't as easy as we thought it would be, we ended up all like spending quite a bit on Ubers, which in the long run probably would have been just best for us to get the Uber in the city of Paris. Probably would have been the same amount um, and way less stress and we could actually go into the city when we wanted to come back like go to where we wanted to and then walk back and things like that we would have more flexibility versus you're taking your uber right now spend the whole day in the city and then take it back because then if you just keep going and coming unless you just have that disposable income we didn't plan for that so we try to be as careful as we wanted just so you are aware it may not even be saving you money if you're staying outside of the city obviously just Figure out what works best for you. And then another tip would be carry-ons. <laughs> so kind of what I mentioned earlier in this video. So I'm in Texas and when I've traveled to other states or to Canada or when I went to London or when I've traveled to Mexico, Central America, I can take as many liquids as I want in my carry-on bag as long as each liquid is less than three ounces I believe and so if that's two Ziploc bags or if that's one like makeup bag I've never been told anything by it whenever I go through TSA either check in your bag or you know just have one Ziploc bag but I also will say with this we had a lot of trouble getting to the airport in Paris and I had already paid to check in my bag um, and I know a lot of the times you can check in your bag when you're at like when you're boarding and so I said well I already paid for it I will just check it in when I'm there I'll give them I'll show them my phone and show them that I already paid for it well I get there and she says oh you paid for it you needed to drop that off at check-in you can only take one back because I had my backpack and my um, carry-on luggage and again here in the US you both of those count as carry-ons. You can carry both things in. Airlines we usually fly with, you can take a personal and a carry-on item. So she's like, can you fit your backpack into your luggage? And <laughs> my luggage was stuffed, so I knew that that was not gonna happen. I ended up having to pay an extra. I had already paid 25 euros the night before, and then I had to pay an extra 50 euros. So it cost me 75 euros. I ended up paying $83.40 to check in my bag. Not a fun thing to do, so just be aware of that stuff. We decided to leave on New Year's Eve, and then we came back on the 8th of January, so it was a pretty long trip. And I did learn something. A lot of things are closed. So where we're from, in the city that I live in, yeah, a lot of places are closed on Christmas Day, but you will still find your like main things open. Like you can still go to, I think, Walmart. You can still go to IHOP and Denny's if you need a place to go eat. And so we were kind of counting on something being open in London when we got there during Christmas Day, because when we got there, it was already like Christmas morning. And no. <laughs> Nothing was open. Public transit was closed, which is something we didn't even think about. So yeah, it sounds fun to go during the holidays, but I would say just if you know that's gonna be the case, maybe get there a couple days before the holidays so you can get yourself food and make plans for food during that day that everything's closed. And then when we got to Paris, we got there on New Year's Eve. Oh no, we got to Rome on New Year's Eve and everything was open, but the guy told us, you know, things are gonna start closing earlier today. So we got there on New Year's Eve, like during the like midday, he's like, things start to close around three or four today. So don't count on anything like that. And of course, everything's gonna be basically closed tomorrow. So plan when you're traveling during the holidays. It can be tricky. It was still fun, but it was tricky. And then the last thing, the last thing doesn't really matter, but your Netflix show or your Hulu show may not be available in the country you're visiting. The Bachelor aired me while I was in London. I tried to watch it and it's like, it's like it's not available here. And then we started watching Dracula when we were in Italy and we wanted to finish it when we were in London on Netflix and we couldn't because it's not available on England's Netflix, but it was in Italy's and it is here in the States. So yeah, those are my learnings. Those are my tips. If you have any tips, on traveling internationally or just travel in general please leave them down in the comments below i hope you guys enjoyed my travel vlogs i won't be traveling again until probably may but i'll be going to california to visit my sister because she will be having baby number two i hope you enjoyed like comment and subscribe i will see you guys next time bye